For years, I struggled with learning songs. I felt like I was pushing a donkey up a mountain. <coughs> then I had an epiphany. It came when I learned the classic blues song, Red House, by Jimi Hendrix. What was this revelation, you ask? I realized that songs have patterns. Yeah. And these patterns are everywhere. They're obvious in a lot of blues songs as a standard blues pattern. But the real kicker is it's used in many pop, rock, country, and even jazz songs. A lot. I'm going to show you how to take advantage of this insight. But first, let me turn it over to Dr. Rock and Roll, and he'll explain the anatomy of a blues song. Let's do this. I'm Dr. Rock and Roll. Welcome to my office. Here we have the bare bones of the blues. <laughs> Little joke, bare bones. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Okie dokie. The pattern is 12 bars from start to finish. Now, the 12 bars follow the same pattern each time. We start with the one chord, then the four chord. We go on to two bars of the one chord, two bars of the four chord, two more bars of the one chord, then the final four bars we call a turn around because it turns around to the beginning. Five, four, one, five. Okie dokie, that brings you back to the beginning. What's that? Why are there numbers instead of chords? Good question! Using numbers allows us to play the pattern in any key. The number tells us what the chord is depending on the key. We would just substitute the chord for the number. For example, in the key of C, we would substitute a 1 for a C chord. The 4 would be a F chord and the 5 a G chord. Kind of cool, huh? <laughs> Let's see how we can apply this to the song Red House. Hmm. Red House follows this exact same 12-bar blues pattern. And it wasn't until I actually learned it and played it that I realized that this is a pattern that not only repeats over and over, but is used over and over and over. This is in the key of A, so the one chord is an A chord. The four, we substitute a D chord, and for the five, an E chord. Now, there's one more tweak that we're going to make. We're going to change all the chords to seventh chords. Now, instead of A, we're going to play A7. D, D7, and E is E7. This is a fairly common change for blues in particular, not for other styles, but for blues. It gives it more of a bluesy sound, and it will sound more like Red House. Hendrix played Red House one half step higher in the key of B flat. We're doing it in A. If you want to play along with one of his YouTube videos or recordings, go ahead and put a capo on the first fret like this. Now it's in B flat. You're probably wondering what this little snowman doll is. This is Snowy. It's a new version of the doll I slept with every night as a child. This one was a gift from my aunt. Here's what the original Snowy looks like. I keep him around to remind me to stay curious like I was when I was a child. I need all the help I can get. There are two levels to understanding something in music. The first level is where you understand it intellectually. The second level is where you can really use it, and that's where you take it into yourself and it becomes a part of you. To get to the next level, you need to actually listen to it and play it. I've created a play-along track that's going to help you with that. Go ahead and listen to it all the way through. You want to get it clear in your mind. Then pull out your guitar and play the chords along with the play along track. Moving on. Oh! <laughs>